good. So there's a recent trend of online medical professionals performing spinal manipulations called the Y strap. I've been getting tons of requests for my reaction on this type of manipulation. And in this video today, we're going to talk about some of these adjustments. What are my thoughts on it? And do I recommend you guys undergoing these types of adjustments? What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. For those that are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Webb, an orthopedic spine surgery fellow. So, this y strap kind of phenomenon or recent trend of these manipulations by healthcare professionals, I'm getting all lots of questions about what it is, do these things really work, what is the evidence behind it, and we're gonna talk about that today. First, I am by no means an expert in this. This is a disclaimer that um, I am solely a practitioner, surgeon looking from the outside in to see like what is all this hype about? Is there really evidence to support these adjustments? So spinal manipulation is when practitioners use their hands or other devices to manipulate the spine. The amount of force with these manipulations can vary, but it's usually in a controlled manner where the practitioner uses his hand or some type of device to pull traction on the spine. There are some chiropractors that believe that spinal problems called subluxations can cause ill health. And by adjusting or fixing the spine, this can promote healing or restore health. The extent of this belief varies by chiropractor to chiropractor and some chiropractors just don't believe in it at all. So what is the Y strap? Well, the Y strap is a device that you put around the chin and also the base of the skull and it is used to pull traction on the spine. The theory behind this is that if you provide traction between the two vertebrae in the spine, this will allow the spine to be decompressed. It also allows nutrients to go to the area of the spine to kind of nourish that area. If we look at a model here, this is a model of the spine. You have the base of the skull up here. You have your cervical spine. You have seven cervical vertebrae, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. And then you have your thoracic spine, your lumbar spine, and your sacrum. Between each of the vertebrae in the spine, you have what's called an intervertebral disc. The intervertebral disc is like a shock absorber. It's made of a lot of water, and what it does is it cushions the area between those two bones there. In the cervical spine, you also have the vertebral artery. This artery here runs through the side of the vertebral bodies on both sides. It ascends on top of the first cervical vertebrae and then goes up into the skull. You also have the spinal cord. If you look at the back portion of the spine here, this is the front portion of the spine. Well, right in the middle runs the spinal cord. Off of the spinal cord runs nerve roots. So you have your C1 nerve root, C1 nerve root, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. So the idea behind the Y strap or any type of traction in the spine is to relieve pressure and hopefully decompress the spine. If you imagine these two bones here and the disc that's in between them, if there's some arthritis or some bone spurs or some collapse of this disc space, well, that leaves less room for that nerve there. That results in some compression of that nerve. It may cause some weakness, some pain, some numbness and tingling. The idea behind traction is that if you have some compression of that nerve there or some collapse of this disc space, if you pull traction this way here, you allow for more room for that nerve right there and hopefully to restore and nourish the intervertebral disc. A lot of the things that we do in medicine is based off of evidence, evidence-based medicine. And after a very thorough literature search, I just couldn't find much evidence to support its use. Let's go over to the video and check out some of these manipulations. Oh, that's perfect. I don't know whether that uh, looks like it hurts or feels good. I'm not sure. 
Ooh. Mm. They say some people have a uh, really weird sensation after having this done. I've never tried it. Oh, and, uh, my goodness. I'm not sure if I would uh, try that or not. Oh, my God. Okay. Just breathe wow. through your nose. Keep your teeth together. Yes, ma'am. It may look like it. You know, it, it may work. I'm, I'm not girl. sure. Some people swear by it. No, uh, my husband, he, oh, that's right. he watches Jeff perfect. quite a bit. There you go, boy. That was one for the ages. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The towel Crack version of this, you notice they have the white strap, the black kind of strap, there and also go, the towel. The towel version doesn't look as painful as the, the uh, other strap yes, that it they're pulling on. Crack eggs, you want to look? Oh, dang. <laughs> the look oh. on some of these people's faces after uh, this is done is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> oh. I felt that one. <laughs> so here are my thoughts about this Y scrap manipulation. Number one, we're going to repeat this disclaimer that I am by no means an expert. I'm just a surgeon that's looking from the outside in who reviewed the literature on this particular manipulation and just wanted to give my thoughts. I didn't go to chiropractic school and I wasn't trained in this form of medicine. So first, not all chiropractors believe in this and not all chiropractors perform these type of adjustments. There are some chiropractors that do, the ones online and on YouTube that have caused a recent interest in this form of chiropractic medicine and there are some chiropractors that just don't do it at all. And number two is that even though this looks like a very unsafe procedure, well, no one's going to get decapitated. Your skull is not going to be detached from your spine just by getting an adjustment like this. It's just not going to happen. Number three, not every patient is a candidate for this type of manipulation. There are certain cervical conditions as well as lumbar conditions that chiropractors feel that meet the indications for this adjustment and you have to have a discussion with your chiropractor after a thorough exam, history and physical as well as imaging studies to see if you're a candidate for this manipulation. I think there are many causes of neck pain as well as low back pain that it is critical to get a diagnosis and understand what's going on with your neck or your lower back before undergoing a manipulation like this. If you have a huge disc herniation in your neck and it's pressing on your C6 or your C7 nerve root causing some weakness as well as some numbness and tingling in your hands, well, that may not be an indication for this type of manipulation. You have to have a discussion with your chiropractor and say, does my condition meet the indications to undergo a manipulation like this? The next thing is that these adjustments and the traction that they're doing, these things are just temporary. If you have a bad disc in your neck and your vertebrae are collapsed or you have some compression in your neck, I don't think that traction will provide a permanent solution. But I always tell patients that you should exhaust all non-operative measures before going to surgery so that the surgeon as well as the patient knows that they've tried everything else and if nothing else works, then surgery is used only as a last resort. So as a spine surgeon who has recently reviewed the literature for this type of manipulation, as well as speaking to a chiropractor recently, I think it's okay to try the y strap manipulations only if you have been evaluated by a healthcare professional and meet the indications with a certain condition that may benefit from this type of manipulation. I think with these adjustments, the results may be temporary. Some patients may only need one adjustment and feel fine for a couple weeks or for a couple months, but there may be a handful of patients that may need to have this type of traction done 
on a more frequent basis. There's not a lot of evidence behind these type of adjustments, but if I think you have a cervical condition or a lumbar condition, I think it's appropriate to try and exhaust all non-operative measures before going to surgery. There are some spinal conditions that just need surgery sooner than others, but there are a lot of spinal conditions and pathologies that can be treated conservatively for a prolonged period of time. I'm a firm believer in that if you try something and it works, then stick with it. If it doesn't, try the next thing. And if that doesn't work, well, surgery is always a last resort. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.